We're trying to do something um, difficult that no one has done before. We're trying to design nanoparticles, build them, decorate them with molecular moieties to target them to neurons in the brain, apply them to the brain, and use light to record their optical properties or to activate them. This uh, can only happen if we combine expertise in every one of these tasks. We need theoretical physicists that can actually calculate the properties of nanoparticles. We need uh, inorganic chemists that can actually fabricate them. We need organic chemists that can decorate them with uh, molecules. We need biologists and neurobiologists that can actually uh, apply them to the brain of animals and use light to record their, their properties. Now, and this is exactly uh, what we have here. We have a collaboration in which we have experts in every one of these areas. What my team is bringing is uh, expertise in neuroscience. Uh, we are uh, hardcore experimentalists. We work with uh, brains of animals. Um, we study neural circuits in the cerebral cortex of mammals. And uh, we also have a lot of experience developing optical methods that are used actually throughout the world, including in the Basque uh, country, to record the activity of neurons using light or to activate neurons uh, using light. So we bring the, the neuroscience and we also bring the optics to the, uh, to the table here. If everything works according to the plan, we will end up with nanoparticles that uh, could open a new door uh, to neuroscience for scientific research. People could use these nanoparticles systematically to investigate uh, how the brain of animals uh, work. These nanoparticles could also open a new door in the clinic because they could be used uh, in patients that suffer mental or neurological diseases, uh, both as methods to better diagnose the disease and understand what's wrong, and also as methods to, uh, to cure the disease using optical therapies. And finally, these nanoparticles could lead uh, to uh, new economic uh, enterprises because they could be used to build uh, novel brain-computer interfaces at the nano level, at the nanoscale, and these uh, brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, uh, could be used as a new uh, type of uh, device, electronic device, to connect the human brain to the net, to a computer. So this uh, could uh, end up uh, being the future of the tech industry. I think it's widely uh, assumed that in the future, instead of having a cell phone in our pockets, we'll have some sort of um, brain iPhone that we will wear it either on our heads, like a helmet, a diadem, or a, or a, or a cap, or a hat. No? So these nanoparticles could provide a new way to build this type of, of technology. The brain is a gigantic network of neurons. Um, there's approximately a hundred billion neurons in the human brain, and each of them is connected probably with another hundred thousand neurons. So just to give you a feeling, that's about three times the size of the whole internet of the Earth in every one of us. No? And this machine is powered with very little energy. It's estimated it uses about 20 watts of power, which is the wattage of a very dim light bulb. So we're running three internets just with a little uh, bit of power, just with a, with a sandwich that we eat uh, during the day, and that's enough to power this. And out of this gigantic network, uh, through some sort of mystery, um, the human mind emerges. So everything that we are, our cognitive and mental abilities, our thoughts, our perceptions, our, our emotions, our memories, our personalities, our consciousness, all of that comes out of the firing of this gigantic network of neurons. So uh, we know a lot about individual neurons, how a single neuron works but we don't know what happens when you put them all together. I think that's uh, the biggest uh, mystery in neuroscience, and this is one of the biggest challenges in, uh, in, in science in general.